Hi, I'm Mitch Albom, author of Tuesdays with Maury and Five People You Meet in Heaven. My new book's called The Timekeeper. It's a novel. It obviously deals with the whole question of time, which is something that I've seen that my readers and, and myself have been grappling with, and I think pretty much everybody in America. How much time do we have? Are we running out of time? How are we using our time? I think I was looking out the window and I saw a deer run across, and, and I said, you know, that deer has never looked at a watch. I always feel the bigger the topic, the smaller the story. <laughs> That's why I think fables, morality tales, and even biblical tales, that you're, they're always short, and yet they carry these huge, huge lessons. And I thought, well, maybe I can make this book about time sort of my invention of the Father Time legend. He's actually a young man, the first man on earth, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, to begin to count time. He's punished by the heavens because they're watching down and they're going, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be enjoying your life. That's why we gave you the planet and the world and everything. What's with the counting? He ends up being punished by being banished to a cave where he has to spend the rest of eternity listening to all the voices from people on Earth who ask for more time and more minutes and more hours. He's given the opportunity to come back to Earth. And if he can find two people on Earth that he can teach the real meaning of time, one who doesn't want enough time and one who wants too much, then and only then will he be freed from his sort of purgatory and be allowed to finish his days on Earth the way that he wanted. Man alone has a fear that no other creature on Earth has, the fear of time running out. He tells some of the people um, that, uh, that he doesn't like clocks or watches. And they say, why not? He says, because I'm the sinner who invented them. I've seen a lot of people now uh, pass away. I've lost a lot of people in my life who are really dear to me. Um, I've written about a couple of them. I'm the person who generally needs my books the most. It was certainly that case where I was kind of the dumb kid and this wisdom of this professor really had so much to say to me and I shared it with the world, but I also took it for me. I needed his help. I'd say my book writing process is, is not all that fascinating. I rock back and forth as I'm reading what I've written. And if I stop, it usually means that I've hit some clunk in the storytelling. My wife will sometimes come in and she'll say, read me what you have. And I'll just read it out loud. She's never, I think, read any of my books on paper. You know, you can't see her, so you don't know what face she's making while you're, while you're reading it. She could be going, I've never written about a teenage girl. I don't think in any of my books, but I have uh, 15 nieces and nephews. I've watched how they talk, how they text, what's important to them. And I created this, this girl, Sarah Lemon, who is kind of an outcast. She's too smart. She's a little heavy. And this boy takes an interest in her, or so she thinks. And he's handsome and he's popular. When he breaks her heart, which of course inevitably he's going to do, she's devastated. And then she goes to send him a message on Facebook. And she pulls up his page and she sees on his page he has written, oh, I can't believe this girl made a play for me, yuck. She's so devastated by this that the whole world now knows what happened that she wants to kill herself. And sadly, this is something that happens way more often than we like to think in this country. The second character in The Timekeeper um, that Father Time has to influence, he's the richest, one of the richest men in the world. He's like on the Forbes top 15 list. When he's faced with his mortality, when he gets a disease, he decides, forget trying to beat the disease. I'm gonna beat mortality. I'm gonna freeze myself. I don't believe that we were intended to um, freeze and come back 500 years from now. Everything has its time, and we're on Earth for our time, and our children's 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 children will be on Earth during that time. The whole point was that every day is precious. If you know you're not gonna get an endless amount, if you're lucky, you'll get 80 years, then what do you choose to do with your tongue?